reading of the word. Our scripture comes from John chapter 11, verses 24 through 27. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection in the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ and the Son of God, which should come into the world. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and doers of his word. Church, let us pray. God, we thank you and we praise you. Thank you, God, for this another day, God. Thank you for last night lying down, God. Thank you that you watched over us, Father God. Kept us from danger, seen and unseen. So, God, we arose this morning to give you the glory, honor that is due your name. Thank you for being the mighty God that you are. Thank you, God, for being able to come into your house, God, and worship with our church family, God. Thank you, God, that we have a place called St. John Church Unleashed, Father God, to come and worship you, God, to give you the glory and honor that is due your name. God, we come this morning to lift you up, God. In spite of all the things that is happening outside these four walls, God, we give you the glory and the honor because you're great. God, no matter what's going on, we know that you're bigger than any problem that we might face. So we give you the glory and the honor again, God. Lord, we pray for this service this morning. We pray for the one that will stand and proclaim your word, God. Lord, we pray, Father God, for your holy boldness, Father God. We pray, God, that that word will come into our hearts and our minds, God, and cause us to be better and to do better, God. Thank you, God, that we will go outside these doors, God, and spread that word, God, to those that do not know you in the pardon of their sins, God. We see so much is going on in this world, God, but we know that you're in control. When we will keep our eyes on you and we will stay focused, God, and lean on you and not on ourselves, Father God. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for your promise, God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so, God, again, we give you the glory and the honor that is due your name. Thank you for our pastor, God. Continue to use him for your glory, God. Use him, Father God, to draw men, women, boys, and girls to you, God. So in the end, God, that your kingdom might be filled, God. And use each of us as members of St. John, God, not only to take in your word, but to spread that word as we go about our uh, daily uh, task, God, that we honor you in uh, spreading your word. God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. Amen and thank God.
Amen. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Give God a hand clap, everybody in this place. It's good to know that we serve a living God. Amen. Someone that can come and answer your needs right then and not after a while. We serve a right now God. So whatever we call on him, he is available. And I thank God for that. We want to invite all of those individuals that are listening by way, amen, a virtual audience. Thank you for joining us this morning. We want you to do, one, do something for me. Get your pen and your paper and uh, get your children, I would say children's, but get your children together. And let's in. Get, uh, let's get position ourselves to have a great time this morning. We just thank God for you tuning in this morning. And for those who are in the congregation, thank God that you made the journey. The scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together let us exalt his name to us that means you amen father god thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way we thank you for health and strength and the activities of our limb holy spirit thou welcome in this place have your way in the name of jesus and we'll give you the glory and the honor in jesus name we pray amen and amen amen, amen. good morning saint john as good we morning. stand on our feet I just want to tell the Lord, thank you for all he's done for me. Anybody want to thank the Lord for all he's done for you? It could have been me or you outdoors with no food or clothes, but God didn't see fit to let none of those things be. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for me. That's your name, Jesus.
Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. We magnify you today. We glorify you today. We look up to you today. We honor you today. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you because you are all that. And all that you will be. We magnify you this morning. Lord, we confess our sins right now. We ask you to forgive us of our sins right now. Yes. Father, we ask and pray that you look on your people right now, Lord. You know all about the situation, Lord. In every home, you know about the situation. On every job, you know about the situation, oh God. In the na every neighborhood, you know about the situation, oh God. Yes. Oh God, oh God. In every city, in every state. Father, we ask and pray that you bless our country today, Lord. Lord, we need you today like we never needed you before. Not just in America, Father, but the whole world, Father, the whole world needs you today like we never needed you before. Lord, I thank you today. I thank you because it's already done. I thank you because what we're trying to figure out is already done. I thank you because what, we, what, you've been, what we've been worried about is already done. Because, Father, you are all that. Father, we pray for our children. We pray for our families. Father, we pray for our church. We pray for the pastor on today, Father. Touch him today, Lord. From the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Encourage him today, Lord. Encourage him to keep on keeping on. Because, Father, you told us in your word that, that, that our work is not in vain. And, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to pray for your people on today. And, Father, we thank you for meeting every need. I know it's done, Father. I know it's done. Thank you for meeting every need right now. We just magnify you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Amen and amen. Once again, we are so delighted to be here this morning, and I, my responsibility is to welcome you, our many guests, those that are virtually as well as in the auditorium this morning. We are grateful for you worshiping with us this morning, whether virtually or even where under the sound of my voice, wherever you may be. We're excited because we know that you have choices, and thank you for choosing St. John to be your place of worship this morning. At this time, I'd like to recognize all those individuals and our special guests. Those are watch, watching by way of virtual. If you would, amen, type in that comment section that I am a visitor, and those members that are online as well, let's celebrate those individuals by letting them know that we appreciate them choosing St. John this morning. If we should have any individuals for the first time you're in the congregation, we'd like to acknowledge your presence. If you would stand right where you are, we would like to acknowledge you and just to love on you. Don't be scared. We're just happy to have you if you're here. But we, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so kindly, amen. You may be seated. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Denny D. Davis, and the entire St. John family, we appreciate you being with us this morning, and we want to ask everybody to do a special favor. And I know there's some time we sit in the audience, and I'm aware of that. We don't want to stand because you're a little shy, but you're still in the background. Thank you for coming, even though you're sitting down. If you get your cell phone out, and we're going to ask that you would take, this is a good chance to, this is a good reason you can pull your cell phone out, you won't be rebuked. Amen? But do what I'm going to say, though. Now, let me put that there. It ain't for you to go screaming the internet. Streaming the internet, do what I ask you to do. Amen? And that's what, I want you to pull your cell phone out, and if you would type in the word guest, G-U-E-S-T, -E to the number 87803. Once again, that word is G-U-E-S-T, guest, to the number 87803. 
a form would generate that. We ask that you would fill that form out in its entirety, and someone from our service will uh, be getting in contact with you. Once again, welcoming you to the St. John Church, and we appreciate you joining us this morning. Uh, once again, on behalf of our pastor and all of us, we are a friendly church, y'all. Just come on out and check us out. Amen. We love Jesus. Amen, St. John. Um, you better tell somebody. Amen. Our mission here at the St. John Church is to inspire and to ignite and to impact society with the message of Jesus. And anytime that you're in either one of the locations here, Grand Prairie or South Lake, please stop by and enjoy service worship with us and worship with us. Once again, have a great week. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Good Sunday morning, SJC family. These are your announcements. Seniors, parents, and guardians, we're excited to celebrate you, the graduating class of 2024. We've already emailed the details for senior days, but let's make it official. Senior Mingle on Saturday, April 20th at 4 o'clock p.m. at Chicken and Pickle in Grand Prairie. Don't miss the fellowship, food, and fun planned with you in mind. And we culminate senior days by inviting everyone to meet us for Senior Sunday. That's Sunday, April 28th at 10 o'clock a.m. Our seniors begin the morning with a special step and shoot photo event at 9 o'clock a.m. Then our worship experience for everyone will include the class of 2024 recognition. Seniors will lead throughout the worship services. Seniors, don't forget to check your emails and handle all your to-dos today. Senior days will be unforgettable. It's not a hopeless marriage in this room, not one. No matter how dark it is, no matter how hurtful it is, no matter how discouraging it is, there's hope. St. John Church Biblical Counseling Ministry presents an in-person video seminar, Redeeming the Realities of Marriage. That's April 19th and 20th. Remember, that's Friday and Saturday. Registration is $40 per couple and $20 for individuals. Register today. The Young Adult Worship Night is Friday, April 26th at 7 p.m. at our Grand Prairie campus. We have an exciting lineup, church family. Trey Daniel, Kalia Tillman, Naya Cotton, and Reverend Sam Pryor. Our very own Greg Ellis, former Dallas Cowboy. That's right, church family, you know him. He invites St. John to attend the DFW Mental Wellness 5K Walk and Fair on May 4th. This is a free event. Everyone is impacted by domestic violence. Anyone can become a victim of domestic violence. All are invited to be a part of this important conversation women and students 13 to 18 years old. Join the Women of Victory on Saturday, May 18th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in our Grand Prairie Campus Family Life Center as we raise awareness to end domestic violence. Learn to recognize, respond to, and be resilient in changing this behavior. Hear from leading experts, advocates, and survivors. No one deserves to be abused. Our event will be held in our Grand Prairie Campus Family Life Center on Saturday, May 18th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and a continental breakfast and salad lunch will be provided. The registration fee is $25, but you can save by purchasing our early bird registration for $20 until May 1st. Attendees are asked to wear purple as a sign of unity in the fight to end domestic violence. Registration is now open. Kids Across America is a Christian athletic camp located near Branson, Missouri. SJC is scheduled to take 80 children ages 10 to 18 years old. The camp date is June 16th through the 21st. The cost for each camper is $325. The cost covers KAA fees, insurance, snacks, t-shirts, meals, and travel expenses. SJC's been attending camp for several years with testimonies of how KAA has impacted their lives. A donation of any amount would be deeply appreciated to help travel and food expenses. Donations may be made via Givelify on the Kids Across America line item. Thanks in advance for your support. Attention St. John families with children ages 5 to 11, you're invited to join the Children's Choir. Grand Prairie Choir rehearsals are on Wednesdays at 6.15 p.m. South Lake Choir rehearsals are on Sundays following 10 a.m. service. See you at our next choir practice, church family. 
Ladies, 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 it's time to start a Bible study where we develop an intimate relationship with God and build community. The book for this spring is Rest for My Soul. Books are available in the bookstore for $20. All classes are via Zoom. April is National Volunteer Appreciation Month. We thank and celebrate all of our volunteers for their dedicated service to God's kingdom and to St. John Church. Each Sunday in April, we'll acknowledge and celebrate our volunteers during each service. On Sunday, April 21st, Pastor Davis will pray a special prayer for our volunteers. Also on Sunday, April 21st, we'll have our SJC 5G ministry fair following the 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. services at the Grand Prairie Campus and on Sunday, April 28th, following 10 a.m. at the South Lake Campus. Members are encouraged to visit the ministry tables, get connected, and join a ministry. Church family, our very own Clark Joseph, Minister of Music and Worship Arts, will be the guest conductor in the 11th Annual Great and Grand American Choral Series in Florence, Italy, Wednesday, June 4th, 2025. Residency dates are from Friday, May 30th, 2025 to Sunday, June 8th, 2025. Choral registration participation deadline is November 15th through December 1st of 2024. The early registration credit for land residency packages is July 1st, 2024. Changing lives through the power of performance. Church fam, during the month of May, we'll join with our pastor and celebrate his 33rd pastoral anniversary. On Sunday, May 5th at 7 a.m., Reverend Dr. Anthony Sharp will bring the word. At 9 and 10 a.m., Reverend B.J. Braggs will bring the word. And then on the evening of May 5th at 5 p.m., we'll have a special service with Bishop Marvin Sapp bringing the word. Then on Sunday, May 19th, Reverend Dr. J. Wilden Gilbert will bring the word at all three services. And on May 26th, Matthew Watley will bring the word at all three services. We look forward to this time of celebration and worship. These are your announcements. Be blessed, SJC family. Doing more in 2024.
don't you put your hands together for our wonderful and marvelous Savior. Oh, just wave your hand if you know that he reigns forever. Amen and amen goes right there. We thank God for our wonderful men's choir. Amen. For leading us in worship. What a wonderful joy it is to be here on this Lord's Day and to worship to, uh, God together and to celebrate just how marvelous and magnificent our Savior is. At this time, we want to take the opportunity to worship Him and celebrate Him in our tithes and our offering. Amen goes right there. In fact, a hand clap goes right there. Just wave your hand if the Lord has truly blessed you, if His goodness is ever present within your life. I want to invite you that if you're in need of a tithing envelope, an offering envelope, just lift your hand high up into the air. Our worship service tents are coming down the aisle even as I speak. And then whether in person or even in our virtual sanctuary, there on the screen now are the many ways in which you and I can electronically honor the Lord, obey the Lord, and worship the Lord again with our tithes and our offering. Well, as we prepare to give, I want to share some pastoral highlights on today. I want to say a great big thank you to all the women that came out yesterday at our South Lake campus for a scent of a woman. Just wave your hand, ladies, if you were out there on yesterday. What a wonderful, wonderful time uh, that the ladies had. And I heard they created some really magnificent uh, perfumes and scents. Uh, but more than that, that they encouraged each other in the wonderful grace and love of God. Amen? Amen. Just put your hands together if you would like more events like that, ladies. Amen. I even got some men clapping their hands, so they must have came home smelling pretty good. I also want to say a great big thank you to each and every one that came out on yesterday for our Not Another Child uh, dealing with human trafficking, and as they had a wonderful panel here, it is something that is much needed. It is something that is very prevalent across our uh, our city and our metroplex and, and just really across our nation and, and throughout the globe and, and uh, oftentimes we want to put our head in the sand and, and say it's, it's not in my neighborhood or it's not on my street or it's not in my community and, and the devil is alive evil is out there and so we just thank God for Reverend Elena and uh, those who put that uh, wonderful uh, panel discussion out there and brought awareness to and, and now we have an opportunity to get our hands in the mix and to be an instrument of God in the midst of this much needed issue amen amen also want to invite all of our volunteers to stand on your feet. This is Volunteer Awareness Month, and so if you are a volunteer in any capacity, you might be an usher, you might be a greeter, you might sing in the choir, you might be a musician, you might be an associate minister, uh, serve as a deacon, uh, you might be in the hospitality, you might be in the kitchen, you might be in the council ministry, Sunday school, and it goes on and on. And so the truth is, is St. John, we cannot do the work that God has called us to apart from you. And so we applaud you in this month. Won't you put your hands together for all of our volunteers? Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Also want to uh, remind us that uh, we have a church outing, and that is going to be on next Sunday, April 21st, and uh, pretty excited because uh, the outing is at Rama Life Fellowship, and it is for Pastor James Thomas. I'm smiling because my brother is here on today, and he is going to bless us here in just a few moments. Amen. Amen. I want to invite all of our married couples. If you are married, would you stand on your feet? All of our married couples. If you are married, amen. If you'll remain standing. If you're not married but you're engaged, I want to invite you to stand as well. If you're not married but engaged. If you're not married and you are thinking about getting married, I want to invite you to stand on your feet. Amen. I see you. I see you. <laughs> there was one that stood. 
Amen. I want to invite you to join us for our What Did You Expect uh, marriage uh, workshop. It's going to be coming this Friday, this Saturday. Uh, the cost is very minimal. It is $40 per couple, $20 for individual. We're going to feed you. We're going to give you plenty of refreshments. We're going to make you feel very comfortable and hospitable. But we're going to share with you some wonderful truths from God's Word. And uh, we're going to discover biblical expectations for marriage. We're going to also discover radical commitments that come from God's word. And we're also going to discover the wonderful grace that God has for us in this wonderful gift called marriage. If you have not already, I want to invite you to sign up out in the foyer. You can also click on that QR code. And then also out there on the foyer is a agenda, meaning when it starts as we kick off on Friday evening and uh, how it will flow out throughout Friday and Saturday. Amen. You may be seated. We pray that you'll join us for this wonderful grace opportunity. Let's lift up our offerings and let's ask the Lord uh, to bless our obedience. And we also want to give thanks for all of his goodness in our life. Amen. Gracious and eternal Father, we thank you for how you sustain us and keep us in all of life. God, there's not one moment, there's not one point in our life in which you are absent. God, I pray that you would grace us with the confidence and the assurance of that very truth. Father, we pray that you would bless each and every giver. God, as we recognize all that we have has come from you and all that we have belongs to you. And so we want to honor you. We want to demonstrate our worship unto you by trusting you. Father, we ask that you take these gifts, use them for your glory, use them for the advancement of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, as your people will continue to testify that your blessings unto us are always shaken together, pressed down, and running over. Lord, we love you, and we ask again that you would so be honored in our giving. In Christ's name we pray, and all God's people said amen and amen. I'm going to invite you to share that as our... Uh, that you can put those physical gifts in the uh, bucket receptacles as our worship service attendants are coming down the aisle even now to collect those. Well, very quickly, in just a matter of a week and a half or two weeks, we're going to have the month of May. And you know what that means here at the St. John Church. That means we get to celebrate the wonderful gift that God has so blessed us with here at St. John. And that is our senior pastor, Dr. Denny D. Davis. How many of you know that he is a wonderful gift from the Lord, that he is a shepherd after the Lord, that he has a shepherd's heart? And many of us have so many testimonies. We have so many uh, words of appreciation that we can give, words of gratitude, and how the Lord has used our pastor to be a blessing to us. And so I just want to invite us to be ready to uh, celebrate and to honor him on this coming month. We have several um, events that's going to be taking place each and every Sunday. We're going to have some wonderful dynamic speakers that are going to come in and help us to uh, celebrate our wonderful pastor. And then each and every Wednesday, we're going to have wonderful pastors and preachers that's going to come in and again continue to help us St. John to celebrate the wonderful gift that God has put before us and it's going to kick off on May the 5th. It's going to kick off with guest speakers that morning but also that night All Roads is going to lead here to Grand Prairie as Bishop Marvin Sapp is going to be our guest speaker. Amen. And so I just double dog dare you to miss it. I just want to encourage everyone, don't forget to spread the word of the wonderful celebratory time that we're going to have celebrating God's wonderful gift to us here through our senior pastor. Amen. And then also I just encourage you and to pray about how you can be a blessing and how you can just honor him in a, in a tangible way. And just to say thank you. He gives so much, so much that you and I will never know. Uh, but uh, and, and God will reward him and bless him, but you and I can be an extension of that. Uh, the Bible says how blessed it is to give the man of God a cup of cold water. Amen? Amen. Let, let's make this a refreshing, cooling month for our senior pastor. Amen? Amen and amen. Well, I want to invite us all, and that is on May 4th, that Saturday. Um, <clears throat> it's my birthday, too. But um, <laughs> did I say that? I'm sorry. 
Anyways, there, there's going to be a mental health awareness walkathon. Um, I guess I probably need to go walk on that. Um, but anyways, that's going to be at 6805 Patrol Way in Dallas, Texas, and this is a free event. It begins at 8 a.m. It is sponsored by our own Deacon Greg Ellis, and uh, you can go to our website to register, um, but we're going to ask all of our St. John members that come out and participate in this uh, wonderful walk for mental health awareness. Um, if you will, put on your St. John shirt. It doesn't matter which one, just put one on. Amen? Amen. Well, how many of you ready to hear the Word of God? I already mentioned we have a wonderful preacher. He is a brother beloved. He is a son in whom our pastor is well pleased, and uh, he always is a blessing as the Lord allows him to come this way. Will you raise your right hand and say, preach, Pastor Thomas. Raise your right hand again and say, help us to see Jesus. One more time, raise your right hand and say, we're praying with you, Pastor Thomas. Amen. May God be glorified. After the next uh, choir song, the next word we're going to hear is from Pastor James Thomas. Amen. Ha! 
mighty God we serve. I wonder if I got some people that can lift your hands and say, he is excellent. What a mighty God we serve. I have to catch my composure, y'all. Give me a second here because I'm thinking about some of the things God has done in my life over the past 48 hours. And sometimes all you need is an active memory and start reflecting on the goodness of God. If you can think, you can think. You'll get there on the way home and somebody, God has just reminded you, come on, of the dangers he had to pull you out of just for you to make it to church today. Somebody is having a Holy Ghost flashback that when you were down to your last dime, the excellent God stepped in and he made a way. You can sit there and act like God ain't done anything for you. But where are my survivors at? Is there anybody in the house today that can look back over your life and say, if it had not been for the Lord, Jesus, Come on, help them sing, Jesus! Come on, give God your best praise right there. Insert it. Insert it, praise by right Amen. Amen. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Uh, it's always a pleasure to get to go come back home. Amen. It's good to see all of you guys. We bring you greetings again from the Raymond Life Church in Plano, Texas. And and we are honoring, uh, I want to take a moment and honor uh, my pastor in his absence, Dr. Denny Davis. Amen. Um, thank him so much for an opportunity to come share my conviction of a crucified, risen, and coming again Savior. Uh, I know that St. John is not starving for good preachers. Amen. Even as I scan the sanctuary today, amen, there's a whole lot of good preachers in the house. Amen. Uh, and so I want to acknowledge them and thank God uh, for their prayers on today. I get excited to come to St. John because I see, get to see ministry at its finest. There's a spirit of excellency in this house today, amen, uh, from the front door to the choir loft. And God, his hand is upon him, amen, amen, amen. Will you help me thank God for this uh, men's ministry that blessed us in song today? Amen, Dr. Close, uh, 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 Clark Joseph, he and I, amen, we, we always text him back and forth, and I'm always uh, um, excited uh, about what the work that God is using him to perform, amen, in particular in the uh, sphere of music and arts, and amen, I get a chance to pick his brain, amen, because I don't want to be a one-dimensional pastor that I got word, but I don't have worship. I wish I had somebody. Uh, and so, amen, I'm always, and he's always ready to share, amen. I don't, I'm not going to hold you long, but I want to arrest your attention today in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Thank God um, for these volunteers and the staff over at St. John, amen. I'm always a coming over. When I get a chance to come home, I always find something that we can take back to Rhema and apply it, Amen. Back in the 80s when I was rapping, they used to call it biting. Amen. Amen. So I was coming to bite something from St. John and take it back to Ramah. Ezekiel chapter 37. I want you to turn to that. And once you've found it, would you shout word? All right. We need about 19 more people to find it. So we're going to give you time to find it. Amen. Amen. We're going to try this again. Ezekiel chapter 37. Once you've found it, shout word. All right. Thank you so much. 
I want to commence the reading today, uh, Pastor Taylor, I want to commence the reading today at verse number one. I'll be reading from the NIV translation. I'll read into your spiritual conscience. We'll tag the text and then we'll labor for about uh, 25 minutes and then we'll bid you uh, Godspeed. Is that okay? Hear ye the words of our Lord. It says, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth throughout the valley and I saw great many bones on the floor of the valley and these bones were very dry. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know the answer to that. He said unto me, prophesy to these bones and say unto them, dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I'm going to make breath into you and you're going to come back to life. I will attach tendons and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, just like he told me. As I was commanded and I was prophesying, I heard a great noise. There was this rattling sound, and the bones came back together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared unto them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, well, prophesy again. Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds and breathe into these slain bodies that they may leave. Uh, that's enough reading. I, I want to talk about preach to the problem. I need you to help me play preacher. I'm going to ask you three more times today to touch a neighbor or to turn to a neighbor or to say something to a neighbor. But I need you to start this first one off by touching three people and tell them, preach to the problem. That's one. That's one. Now, you might have to move, but you... Our God and our Father, we thank you today for your, your word. Father, it has been declared amongst your people, read aloud, Father God. We pray now that our hearts are ready to receive. My prayer is that this word will do for these people what it did for me. That is, it changed my life gave me a new perspective about who you are, it drew me close to you. I pray today that you will forgive me of my sins, my imperfections, and that God that you would ordain this moment as holy. It's in the strong and perfect name of Jesus we pray. Amen and thanks be unto God. Amen. Let me take a moment and thank, uh, amen, our security uh, and, and, and our assistant, amen, Brother Ed and Brother Donnie, amen. They've been, amen, with pastors since, amen, 540 this morning. They'll be with us all day long, amen. And so I want to publicly acknowledge them and thank them for their service today, amen. amen. Beloved, let me start by saying that there's nothing more powerful, more complete, and more um, competent um, than God's spoken word in the earth. His word has power and the authority to, to work and to change every sphere, every age, every realm, every domain, and every dimension. His word, when he speaks it, he can speak it to both living, breathing, visible, animate object, places, people, and things, and he can speak to the invisible, inanimate objects, dead and non-existent, because his word is powerful. His word has just as much power into, in every atmosphere, every zone, and for every territory. There's power in the word of God. 
I say this because when you read the Bible, you'll come across in the creation in Genesis chapter 1, you'll discover that when God looks at a formless, dark, and chaotic surface that he calls earth in which he created, watch this, by the power of his own word, he said, let there be. And light leaped out of the wounds of eternity because everything falls subject to the divine power of God's competent word. Do I have a witness? In Mark chapter 4, his word is used to the disciples uh, as they are uh, finding themselves in the midst of a storm. Uh, in this storm, the problem is Jesus is sound asleep at the helm of a ship. And the Bible is very clear in the gospel narrative of Mark that they go and wake him up and say, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I like the way Jesus handles it before uh, things get better. He gets up and before he addresses his disciples, he first turns and rebukes the wind and the waves. Uh, he speaks to the storm saying, peace be still. And we find out that the waves calm down like hibernated bears and the wind is hushed like a final breath because he can speak to anything. And he can speak to any place. In Matthew chapter 17, after Jesus had healed uh, a demon-possessed boy on the backside of a mountain that is referred to by scholars as the mountain of transfigurations. Uh, his disciples come to him and they ask Jesus, why couldn't we deliver the boy? Jesus says these type only come through fasting and prayer. Ah, but then watch what happens. He says to them, if you just have faith, I wish I had a Bible reading, the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you can uh, speak to the mountain and it cause it to be moved. Nothing will be impossible for those who get a word in your mouth and declare the words of the Lord. And beloved, I think that we need to keep these promises in mind whenever we're facing insurmountable situations or unbearable burdens or overwhelming obstacles uh, that the word of God spoken in faith has the power to change things. And Oh God. Uh, so instead today, beloved, of you collapsing under the weight of fear, word worry, stress, or buckling beneath uh, the strain of your crisis and calamities. I challenge you today to start standing by faith on the word of God in the strength of his word and get his word in your mouth and preach to all of your problems. And God help me somebody. Uh, all of your problems, uh, your pain, uh, your struggles, your issues, uh, your difficulty need to know some things about the God that you serve. They need to know uh, that Proverbs 18 and 10 says the name of the Lord, come help me somebody, is a strong tower and that the righteous run to it and find safety. Your issues, your problems, your pains, your struggle needs to know that Psalms 34, 19 says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of them all. Your problems, your pressures, your issues need to know that 2 Corinthians 5 and 1 says that though this earthly house, this tent or tabernacle be destroyed, that we have another building from God not made with the house and hands of man. I, I, I'm suggesting to you today that stop always arguing with people. Uh, stop getting into fussy matches, trying to get people to get on board with you. And sometimes you've got to prophesy over what's going on in your life and speak life to your situation. Sometimes you got to say, yes, it's painful, but I'm rebounding from it because God is keeping me. Uh, and, and so our text, uh, and that's what God gives to Ezekiel in our text today. He gives him a word in the midst of what scholars call dry bones. Fast forward, and the more Ezekiel begins to prophesy or preach over uh, his situation, what we discover is that everything around him started changing for the good. Bones which were dry and distant and disconnected as he begins to prophesy over them, they started coming back together again. 
fitted in their proper places, new life, new skin, new tendons, new possibilities. The more he preached to his problem, I wish I had somebody, the more God began to work it out. That's the revelation that I've come to drop off at you, St. John. Before I unload my little red wagon, I want to speak prophetically into someone's situation. The more you speak a word over it, the more God is going to change it. Ezekiel chapter 37 is written during a time of great despair uh, in a nation of Israel. According to the book of Jeremiah chapter 52, you'll discover that Israel and Judah uh, had been overthrown by the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Those who are familiar with ancient texts understand that he seizes control over Jerusalem and Judah. And then he deports many of them back into Babylon to serve as subjects to the king. After burning their homes and schools and businesses to the ground, knocking down the walls of the sacred city, he then proceeds to defile and desecrate the holy temple, leaving them devastated. And all uh, in Jerusalem, the nation was, uh, in essence, dead. Israel as a nation was torn apart physically, Spiritually, they had been disconnected from their God. Nationally, they were not in the same place as related to their covenant relationship with God. Yet, in the midst of decay and destruction and death, God gives Ezekiel a word of hope that their restoration is just around the corner. And that's why, beloved, you can never be so quick to discount, discredit, or disqualify God's people. Because even in the midst of the most miserable circumstances, uh, we have a God uh, that can turn our situation around. So couched in this prophetic tom uh, text in Ezekiel is a comforting reminder to all of us that no matter how excruciating, excruciating our present or painful our past or hopeless our future appears, the good news is one word from the Lord. Uh, can change everything. Uh, I've got these three and I'm through. Let me unload my wagon. The first thing I want you to see that the text is tailored to teach us is that valleys are a part of godly vision. Hold on, Pastor. Valleys are a part of godly vision. Uh, uh, we'll look at the text. Verse 1, uh, Ezekiel says, The hand of the Lord was upon me. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. I want you to see this because the only reason why Ezekiel is in this valley of dry bones in the first place is because in his own testimony, he says, God's hand was on me and the spirit led me there in a vision. I wish I had somebody. And maybe that's the real reason you're dealing with some of your valley experience. Uh, when it seems like things are drying and decaying all around you, perhaps this is a illustration and a revelation that God is getting ready to give you a vision uh, for your future. Uh, see, whenever God gives you real vision, somebody shout real vision. It's always going to be in conjunction to some crisis problems and perhaps some need. Because true vision is not birthed or born out of mountaintops experiences, but rather in the valley of desperation and despair. It's in the valley that your creativity comes to life. It's in the valley where your faith is developed. It's in the valley that you learn how to trust God. And while Ezekiel is in this valley, God makes sure that he can thoroughly examine the environment and properly assess what God wants to reveal to him. So what God does, he walks them to and fro in and out, all around the valley. I want you to look at every bone. I want you to look at its condition because he walks him around it because in Ezekiel, I want you to examine the condition of the bones. Ezekiel, I don't want you to be disillusioned about where you are or what you see. And this is a valley. Somebody say, it's a valley. Uh, uh, come on, say, it's a valley. It's problematic. It's a valley. Uh, yes, these bones, I want you to see it. They are disconnected. They are scattered all around this valley. But this is the reality of the situation. Yes, it is a mess. Uh, 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 but this is also the exact same place. Uh, but I'm going to give you the revelation of a lifetime. Uh, and every now and then, you got to be real about the reality of what you're dealing with. God already knows. Uh, matter of fact, 
fact his hand was upon you that brought you to the valley so that he can release vision that you can understand it was God all the time. I wish I had somebody that could help me testify that I've been to hell and back, got the t-shirt to prove it, but every time I find myself in the valley, I, I thank God that he was there. That's what David says. The Lord is my shepherd because he said, even though I walk through the valley, uh, uh, because I have a vision uh, to go along with the valley because valleys are part of God's vision. Uh, uh, he says, he says, the hand of the Lord was upon me, took me to this valley and vision. Uh, and God began to march me back and forth. He wanted me to examine everything. Uh, the second thing I want to teach you today is virtue attends the voice of God. Virtue, it always attends the voice of God. Uh, while he's standing in the valley with the hand of the Lord is upon him. For some reason in verse 3, God asked him, a question. <laughs> he asked him in verse 3, uh, 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 Son of man, can these bones, <laughs> can these dead bones, these dry, disconnected bones, can they live? King James said, can they live again? Uh, 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 the moment Ezekiel uh, responds, he says in verse 4, uh, 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 he says, he says, he says, Lord, you know the answer in verse 4. He says, then prophesy and see what happens. He says, he says, if you start preaching to what is problematic, if you start declaring my word over everything that is out of order, somebody's missing your revelation. If you get my word in your mouth, I don't care how bad the situation looks. You'll find out that there is power. That word virtue means power. Uh, that wherever my word is proclaimed, help me somebody, uh, power is associated with it. Do I have a witness? He says prophesy uh, to the bones. Uh, so verse 7 says, uh, uh, Ezekiel says, so I did. I prophesied as I was commanded. And the moment Ezekiel started prophesying and or preaching to the dead dry bones, something started happening. Ezekiel, I, 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 let me, he, he says, I heard a rattling. <laughs> then, then I saw, I heard some stuff. I saw some things. He says, I, I saw bones <laughs> reconnecting themselves. He says, but I kept on prophesying. I kept on preaching to the problematic situation. Then skin started showing up out of nowhere. And tendons started reconnecting themselves. And flesh came back on these dead, die, dry bones. The more I preach, hallelujah, the more God started moving in the situation. And every place the word of God was preached, hallelujah, uh, what, accompanying his, what accompanied his word uh, was his power. And that's what Ezekiel saw down in the valley. He saw the power of God at work in cooperation with the word of God spoken. I wish I had somebody. Because wherever uh, there is a word, uh, there is power. Here's number one. Lean over, tell your neighbor, say, wherever there is a word, uh, there is power. Come on, let's try one more time. Wherever there is a word, uh, there is power. Uh, oh, God, his word, God, help me. Hallelujah. Has power to heal. His word has power to deliver. His word has power to set free God and reveal. His word has power to prioritize, uh, to bless and shift completely different atmosphere. His word has power to change the outcome, uh, to make you live right, to love your enemies. His word has power to make you pray for people who despitefully use you. Uh, because wherever there is word, uh, uh, there is power. His word is incorruptible, which means that there is no taint, no impurity that is hidden within the words of scripture that the word is protected by the holy spirit and the bible has survived challenges for years uh, atheists have, have railed against it but his word is still incorruptible hallelujah somebody radicals and false cults uh, have tried to twist it uh, but his word still stands incorruptible not only is it incorruptible but it's indestructible which means it lives and abides forever 
For centuries, people have tried to discredit and destroy God's word, but it's indestructible. Kings of this earth have set themselves against it. American public schools have banned it. Politicians and preachers have misused it and abused it, yet the word still endures because his word is indestructible. And as Ezekiel is standing out there proclaiming, hallelujah, what thus saith the Lord, God begins to shift something. Can I just press, uh, can these bones live again? You know, he says prophesy. He's prophesying and God is working as he is prophesying over the problematic situation. Here's the third lesson. I'll give you this and I'm out of here. Uh, and that uh, it's his vitality that makes us visible. Uh, um, he, he, he's prophesying over the dead dry bones. God brings those bones back together and God, God begins to add flesh and tendons back to those dead dry bones. Uh, but Ezekiel notices that they're still lying on the ground, dead bodies. Um, yes. Um, in verse 9, God says, I tell you what you need to do. Prophesy again. Now, at the close of verse number 8, hear this. You have bones and tendons and flesh, but you don't have no life inside of the bones. Because there's no breath, there is no ruach, there's no pneuma, there is no wind on the inside. Uh, so God changes his preaching audience. He, 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 he shifts, if you will, uh, the direction of Ezekiel's preaching. He, he, he started off preaching to that which was visible. You, you with me? Now God redirects his preaching from that which is visible that he can see. To that which is invisible. He says, you've been preaching long enough to see what I can do in the visible realm. But when you prophesy to your next problem, I want you to prophesy into the invisible realm. Speak to life. He said, speak to breath. Speak to the wind. Speak to the ruach. Because up until this point, I... When Ezekiel takes a look, they are in a state that Adam was in before God stooped down. Created him from the dust of the ground. There he lays there, a lifeless lump of clay. Bible says that God stooped down and breathed something. <laughs> Into his nostril and, and Adam became, uh, help me somebody, a living soul he breathed into his nostril. And beloved, can I tell you, we are nothing without the breath of God. We are useless without the ruach of God operating on our lives. We are essentially invisible. And as Ezekiel is prophesying to the wind, that's when God, the Bible said, he rose them back up. Uh, can I tell somebody when people see you today in comparison to what you were yesterday, they see you who, who they see who you were in the visible realm, but you've had some invisible things to happen in your life. You, you, you found out that when you have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you, that you have power to overcome some stuff. Ah, uh, May Brown, ah, uh, I was rushed to the hospital in the spring of 1964 in Jackson, Mississippi. Her grandson was going to school up in Boston, and when he heard about my dear being sick, he drove his car from Boston to Mississippi to visit my dear. Uh, walks into the hospital room, and he said, my dear, they said she can't have any visitors right now. We have her on this ventilator. Uh, come back tomorrow. Uh, he goes back to Madea's 
residence and enters into an apartment and he starts thinking about how Big Mama used to read the Bible to him when he was a baby. He went over and grabbed that big old white pulpit Bible that sat on a coffee table that had pictures and print. He marched back down to the hospital while Madil was staying lying in ICU. He said, if mama can't get up yet, at least I can go and read the word of God over her life. I feel preaching now. Yonder he goes and he enters into the hospital room and something happened uh, as she came to her senses. Uh, He said, my dear, I know how much you love the word of God. Uh, I know how strong and powerful the word of God used to be when you read it to me when I was a kid. Uh, So because you are sick now and you can't read it, I've come to read the word of God to you. Madea sat up in the bed and said, baby, that's a nice gesture, but, but you don't have to read to me. Because of all the years I was reading to you, I was storing the word of God on the inside for myself. Uh, I may not have a whole lot of power on the outside, but because I hear his word in my heart, uh, I got a whole lot of power on the inside. Uh, Baby, here's what I need you to do. I just need you to call out the letters of the alphabet. Uh, And I'll show you what I mean. He said, my dear A, she said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. B, blessed is the man that not walketh in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sin. Uh, He said, see, Mother Brown, she said, cast thy burdens uh, upon the Lord. He said, D, he said, delight yourself uh, in the Lord. He'll give you the desire. E, she said, enter ye in uh, at the straight gate. F, fret not thyself uh, because of evildoers, uh, for they shall soon be cut down. Uh, G, she said, great is the Lord. Uh, and greatly to be praised. H, she says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Uh, I, she said, into thee, Lord, uh, do I commend my spirit. Uh, J, she said, judge not that you be not judged. Uh, L, she said, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart. Uh, M, she said, make a joyful noise. Uh, in he said no man uh, having put his hand to the plow and look back is fit for the kingdom uh, oh she said that's my favorite oh give thanks can I continue boy said me mama uh, my dear said uh, praise ye the lord uh, uh, Q, she said quench not the spirit R, she said, receive the Holy Ghost. S, she said, stand still and see the salvation. T, she said, take my yoke upon you and learn of it. U, she said, unto thee, O Lord, do I commend my spirit. God, I wish I had somebody uh, that may say uh, I may not have uh, a whole lot of power, strength on the outside, uh, but I've got a whole lot of strength uh, and power uh, on the inside. uh, And somebody uh, like May Brown and Ezekiel uh, can testify that where there's word, uh, there's power. Uh, Can I get you uh, for the second time? uh, Reach over and tap your neighbor uh, and tell your neighbor, uh, get a word in your mouth and God will change your situation. Uh, If you're not too cute, uh, if you're not too stasidim, if you're not too stuck up today, uh, stand on your feet uh, and declare, uh, I'm going to preach until times get better. Uh, I'm going to prophesy until God fix it. And uh, I got a bad hip, uh, but I'm prophesying uh, that I got to keep walking. Uh, I've got problems in my home, uh, but I'm preaching uh, to everyone who breaks uh, into my home. Uh, I'm declaring that this is still my year. I'm proclaiming that this is still my season. And I come against uh, every witch and warlock, uh, every demon and devil uh, that's ever tried to kill me and my family, uh, that the buck stops here. uh, I'm declaring uh, that no weapon, all shucks, uh, formed against me. uh,
I, I got to get out of here. But can I, can I leave here by telling you that God makes victims victorious. The text closes by saying that the reason I brought you to the valley, showed you the bones, is to give you a vision of your future. That these people who claim to love me are victims now, but it's not over. This is the last time I need you to help me shout. Uh, grab somebody by the hand and pull them real close uh, and tell them you're a victim now. Uh, but God's going to give you the victory. Tell them I know it hurt. Come on, come on, tell them. Tell them I know you've been going through. Uh, I didn't, I, tell them I know that you didn't know how you were going to make it. But tell them victory. Yes, yeah, yeah, victory. Uh, 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 victory. Uh, Victory is mine. I, I told old Satan. God, excuse me, but there's somebody next to you who needs to know how you made it. Tell him I made it because I had God in the valley. I made it because I kept on talking to him and he kept on talking to me. I know God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think uh, will you push your neighbor and say keep preaching uh, until that child comes home uh, keep preaching uh, until the report changes uh, keep preaching until what the diagnosis was cannot be any longer tell them you keep preaching until you see god changing you keep preaching until the hand of god puts stuff back together is there anybody Preach to it. Come on. Oh, yeah. Preach to it. Honey. Declare the word of the Lord. to the problem man should not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God you know it's one thing to look at the outside of a person but it's a whole nother thing to know what's on the inside of a person Paul said if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Oh, my brother and sister, the doors of the church are open. I want to invite you. Victory begins with a personal relationship with Jesus. Just before chapter 37 is chapter 36. And that's where God through Ezekiel says, I will take out the heart of stone and I will put in a heart of flesh. Do you have that new heart? Won't you come? We invite you, if you are in the virtual sanctuary, to text to our short code 87803, the word member. And somebody from our ministry team is going to reach out to you and share with you the wonderful hope that you can have, the wonderful victory that you can have in Christ. Victory. Victory. I told Satan, get thee behind. Oh!
Won't you put your hands together for the powerful Word of God? Won't you put your hands together for Pastor James Thomas? Did not our hearts burn within us as he unloaded the Word of God? Thank you, Pastor Thomas. Thank you, thank you. I want to invite us that maybe you tuned in late, maybe you arrived late and you have not had an opportunity to honor the Lord with the tithe and the offering. And so we want to make sure that you have that opportunity. If you are here in the physical sanctuary and you are in need of a physical envelope, again, just lift your hand up into the air. Our worship service tents will be coming down the aisle. And then whether in person or virtually there on the screen are the ways in which you and I can honor the Lord with the tithe and the offering. But also I want to encourage us, let's be a blessing to the man of God. Amen? Amen. Let's encourage Pastor James Thomas as the Lord has so used him as a powerful instrument to so encourage each of us. Weren't you encouraged on this morning? I don't know about you, but I feel the stronger. I feel I can run on because I know the power of the Word of God in my life. I want to invite you that you can be a blessing to Pastor James Thomas. You can do it physically, and that is you can use our face seed uh, envelope. Uh, you can take also just the regular tithe envelope and just write on there, Pastor Thomas. But then also uh, electronically, you can go to Giblify, and there we have a uh, guest preacher uh, visiting preacher there. You can go to that line and you can be a blessing to Pastor James Thomas. Amen? Amen. Well, as we are preparing to, to give, I, I want to acknowledge uh, a very special guest that we have here on this morning. And I want to invite uh, Junior Zeno Zano. Thank you. To stand on his feet. We have uh, Junior Azano here. He is a part of the Grand Prairie City Council. Uh, he represents the entire city of Grand Prairie uh, and at large. He was elected to the city council in June of 2021 in a runoff election after defeating an incumbent who had served for 12 years. Mr. Azano is one of the first African-American council members to represent the city of Grand Prairie since the early 1990s. Amen goes right there. He is also the youngest elected council member in Grand Prairie history. And while serving on the city council, Junior has championed and helped cut property taxes twice. A big amen goes right there. He's also increased the city's homestead exemption to 15%, and he established the VIA Grand Prairie Transit. And can I just say that that alone is a wonderful blessing to the city of Grand Prairie. Amen. He's increased the minimum wage for part-time city employees to $15 an hour and $17.82 an hour for all full-time city employees. Won't you put your hands together for our city councilman, Junior? And I want to encourage us to make sure that we make sure that he stays in the city council. Amen? Amen and amen. Again, put your hands together for our city councilman. And again, as you and I go to the poll and as you are residents of the city of Grand Prairie, let's make sure the good ones stay where they are. Amen? Amen and amen. We are so grateful for his presence here on today. I want to share some pastoral uh, care uh, information, uh, particularly uh, let's be in prayer uh, for Deacon Willie Stapleton as uh, his grandmother uh, made her transition on yesterday, Lizzie Mae Hudson. And so that uh, funeral service is pending for uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Amen. And uh, also let's continue to uh, lift up and be in prayer for the family of Brother Harold Haynes uh, longtime participant of uh, the male chorus for our men's choir and uh, just a, a long tenured member of the St. John Church. Amen. And so let's keep uh, Brother Haynes family lifted up. That funeral service is pending. And then also don't forget that this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. here at the Grand Prairie campus, uh, we will celebrate the life of Sister Connie Crater. 
and that is the wife of Brother Charles Crater and mother of Chelsea Crater and Cornell Wiley. Amen? Amen. And so we want to just be lifting them up, and we know that the God of all comfort will so strengthen and encourage each of these families. Well, I'll invite us, uh, let's stand on our feet as we look to God for the benediction. Again, if you have a physical offering as you exit the sanctuary, our worship service tents will have a bucket receptacle that you can drop that offering in, as well as there is a receptacle in the foyer there on the wall, just on the back side of the sanctuary. Again, want to encourage you to sign up again for our wonderful marriage workshop. What did you expect? And uh, we look forward to sharing with you the wonderful grace of God. Don't forget, we have our wonderful noonday Bible study on this coming Wednesday. And so we look forward to you joining us here in person at 12 noon. Gracious eternal Father, we thank you for what eyes have seen and what ears have heard. God, how you have sovereignly, strategically spoken to us, both individually and collectively as one body in Christ. God, we thank you for the gift of Pastor James Thomas. We pray that you will continue to strengthen him and anoint him for the remainder of his assignments on today. And God, we ask even now for the grace of God that our hearts will not just be um, excited, but God, they will be changed as we are committed to the sufficiency of your word and all that you are doing in our life. We ask this in Christ's name and all God's people said amen, amen. and amen and amen. Won't you share with somebody how much you love them and even more so how the Lord Jesus Christ loves them. Amen.